But first, the world is watching after North Korea conducts yet another bomb test. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Andrew Trujillo. Just hours ago, diplomats at the UN held an emergency meeting to talk about the hydrogen bomb test over the weekend. And now our ambassador to the UN, Nikki Haley, is getting tougher with her words. His abusive use of missiles and his nuclear threats show that he is begging for war. Denver 7's Mark Stewart's on top of these latest developments, and Mark, people are really scrambling. And, and keep this in mind, there are so many different players in this conflict. We heard from the United Nations this morning. There's South Korea, the U.S., and Japan. And then there's China. We talked to Christopher Hill. He's the Dean of International Relations at the school at DU. He's also a diplomat, having served as U.S. Ambassador to South Korea. In his view, the United States really needs to ramp up its conversations with China in a way that we haven't seen before. China is North Korea's communist neighbor and a big economic partner. I think what needs to happen next is probably fewer tweets and more uh, consultations with China. And I think we really need an in-depth consultation with China. We need to understand what they want to see out of this and what we want to see out of this. I think we've just kind of scratched the surface. And I think these episodic visits to China or episodic phone calls or even tweets are not getting the job done. Forming a deal with China could be complicated. For example, the Chinese could want guarantees about the placement of American troops. It's important to point out this is not just about money and goodwill. There are many other nations whose relationships mm. are also at stake. So many variables here. So until an agreement is reached, who does Ambassador, say, is, Ambassador Hill say is most at risk? Is it the U.S.? The U.S. certainly is feeling some fear right now, but there's also a lot of concern with South Korea. Sure. If you look at Seoul, 20 million people live there, and there are warheads from North Korea pointed directly toward it. It's a condensed city. There are new buildings. There are old buildings. So if North Korea wanted to make an immediate statement, it would have a lot of impact on South Korea, and that could be disastrous. We know everybody's watching. All right. Thank you, Mark. Sure. Appreciate it. Now, these bombs are, of course, concerning either way, but we looked into the difference between an atomic bomb and a hydrogen bomb. North Korea's test involved a hydrogen one, which is much stronger than an atomic bomb. U.S. forces dropped atom bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki back in Japan. Japan in 1945. A hydrogen bomb is regarded as a significantly stronger one, and some experts say it's basically two bombs in one. We are, of course, keeping a close eye on all the developments from this. When we're not on the air, you can always find more on our website, thedenverchannel.com.